Hi, Kinesiology 1018. Today we're going to talk about muscular strength and muscular endurance. This is also chapter four in your textbook, um, if you want to go back and read through that also. Okay, um, so what we're going to talk about today, we'll talk about some of the components of muscles, what they are, what they do, and we'll talk about different ways that we can use them, talk about where some of our major muscles are located, and then we'll talk about how to train and assess our muscular strength as well as our muscular endurance and we'll, we'll top it off with looking at kind of the supplement and um, steroid industry when it comes to muscular development okay so what makes up a muscle okay, if you're probably taking physiology right now you've probably seen a lot of this um, we, we start out with a muscle fiber which is a single muscle cell okay so here we have an example of a muscle fiber inside of a whole muscle cell. Myofibrils are the individual structures that have the protein within muscle so that we can cause muscle contraction. And then the nuclei, or a nucleus, is where the cell DNA is located. And muscles are special because they are um, multinucleated. So they have many nuclei for each individual muscle cell. Okay, so that's a, something special there with those. As we add more nuclei, we can add more capacity for that muscle to grow and develop. And even if we lose some muscle, we can regain it much faster. Okay, there's also some other tissues we need to know about. Um, we need to know about tendons, ligaments, and cartilage because these interact with our muscles in different ways. Tendons are what transmit the force that the muscle creates into the bone. So muscles contract. They, they produce a force, it pulls on the tendon that that muscle attaches to, that tendon then attaches to a bone, and then that force from the muscle causes motion of that bone, which causes our general motion. Ligaments are similar to tendons, except they attach bones to bones. So these restrict movement from um, bone against bone that go in, in ways that we should not be moving. So they, they create some stability within the joint and then allow us to freely move in the planes that we need to move. And lastly, cartilage. Cartilage is in between the bones. So this is where we get a, kind of a low friction sliding surface that also cushions um, those bones against each other as we move. All right, so what we're also gonna talk about is how muscles are causing these contractions or, or producing these forces. Okay, muscles can only work when we are when we stimulate those muscles using our nervous system okay so muscles cannot work on their own they need the nervous system so that they can contract so that they can control movement and create movement a motor unit is a motor nerve and the muscle fibers that it innervates okay so that is the nerve that um, innervates specific muscles there or within one muscle say your bicep in a group of muscle fibers that is innervated or gets its signal from a motor unit and then that motor unit will control that group of muscle fibers and we have millions of motor units throughout our body and the axon is this long slender part this is what the signal sends down through so it sends down through the axon to get down into that muscle myelin is this fatty covering that goes around the axon and this insulates the nerve and allows that signal to move faster and faster and faster okay, as we practice skills or practice contracting our muscles in different patterns we lay down more myelin on along that axon which means we can send those signals quicker if we can send the signal quicker we can move quicker or start movement much much quicker okay um, so this is this is kind of our body's ability to learn with our muscles or coordinate our muscles and our ability to pick the right amount of motor units to create just enough muscle tension to cause the exact movement that we want. Okay. Um, if we contract too many motor units, we maybe produce too much force, don't produce enough, we don't produce enough, or we don't then produce enough force, and then we don't move in the way that we want it. Okay. And then muscles can grow and shrink um, and change their size. Okay. Um, this happens through the process of hypertrophy. 
hypertrophy is an increase in the size of a muscle fiber. So each muscle fiber can hypertrophy or get larger. Um, they can also atrophy or decrease their muscle size so they can get smaller. Um, these depend on what we stimulate the muscle to do. If we train the muscle, <clears throat> we use the muscle, we force it to contract and relax, contract and relax um, and get stronger, we will hypertrophy or increase the size of that muscle fiber depending on how much training we do. Um, if we do some training, it might change a little bit. If we do a high volume or a lot of training, we can increase that size a lot and a lot and a lot. And that increase in size comes from satellite cells repairing the muscle tissue after we train it. Um, so this is protein synthesis or creating new proteins within the muscle to increase its size. Um, and a hint here, if you're, if you're trying to cause this hypertrophy or increase your muscle size, you have to consume protein. If you don't consume protein, your body won't have enough to synthesize new protein within your muscles. We'll talk in our nutrition section about how much protein you really need to change your muscle size. But if we stop moving, if we stop training, we can atrophy those muscles or shrink those muscles. Um, you might see this in individuals who have uh, maybe a broken arm or a broken leg and they're in a cast for weeks and then they take the cast off and the arm or leg looks significantly smaller than the other limb. This is because that muscle was not used. You're not contracting those muscles, which causes them to shrink in size because the body doesn't need to hold on to all that muscle tissue. So it gets rid of it. Okay. Because our body is lazy and our body doesn't want to keep anything that's not um, helping us or doesn't want to keep anything that requires a lot of energy, but isn't giving us much because muscle does require a lot of energy to maintain. That's one of the keys when it comes to weight loss training, increasing muscle size and hypertrophy, even in small amounts can help with overall energy usage throughout the day, which means you're more likely to gain more body weight. That is not useful. Hypertrophy muscle is very useful to our body. Uh, extra fat tissue is not as useful um, when it's in excess. Um, and all of this hypertrophy and growth um, is stimulated by training and a hormonal stimulus. Specifically, testosterone um, is one of the primary hormones that is associated with increasing muscle size. Um, so it is a primarily male hormone. Females have testosterone. Um, just in much lower quantities, which is why we see a lot more muscle growth occur in males compared to females. Um, so that's just one of the reasons. So regardless of if you do the same training, a lot of training, females will often not be able to hypertrophy in the same amount that males do. So if you are worried that you are going to gain a bunch of muscle size from um, resistance training or lifting weights, it takes quite a bit to really cause that change. If you're exercising two, three days a week, um, you'll probably just get stronger and your muscle might hypertrophy a little bit, but nowhere near what happens to um, someone who is training six, seven days a week, multiple times a day with really heavy resistance. Um, so don't be worried. Doing some resistance training will not cause you to um, gain a ton of muscle. It doesn't happen just like that. Okay. Um, and then we did have different types of muscles. Okay. We have slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers. So some muscle fibers are really good at endurance activities. So creating a lower amount of force, but being able to do it over and over or keep it there for a long period of time. We also have fast twitch fibers, which are really strong, really forceful, but they get tired or they fatigue really quickly. So these are kind of our, our speed strength fibers, and these are kind of our slow endurance fibers. Okay. Uh, we have an intermix of both. Most individuals have about 50-50 throughout their entire body. Um, but with training, you can kind of shift that from uh, more slow twitch to more fast twitch or more fast twitch to more slow twitch. Um, but genetics plays a huge role. So if your family is very good at endurance activities, you probably will be too. 
If your family is better at uh, faster, more powerful movements, you probably will be too. Um, and when talking about those fast and powerful movements, power is the ability to produce force quickly. Um, so to contract that muscle with a lot of force in a very short period of time. This is our key indicator of muscle function. Um, so muscles that can uh, produce more power are more useful for us in a sporting context, in a life context. Um, you're able to catch yourself if you fall, you're able to um, push things that are heavy, catch things that are heavy, move yourself quickly. You're more useful and more powerful you can be. So think about lifting things at your job, lifting things around your house, um, moving things. If your car dies and you have to push your car, if you can't produce a lot of power, that car is not going to move to where you want it to go. Um, so we want to train that. We want to produce force and we want to produce it quickly. Um, and we can control this force that we produce in three different ways with our muscles and our muscle actions. Okay. We have an isometric muscle action, which is where we produce force with our muscle, but our joint doesn't move. Okay, so think about doing like a plank or if you go down doing a push-up and then you stop halfway and you don't move. Okay, that would be an isometric muscle action where producing some force, you're still trying, but the joint isn't moving. Okay. The next is a concentric muscle action. This is where the muscle produces a force and the movement is in the same direction of that force. So if you try to bend your elbow and your elbow bends, the muscles that bend your elbow, your elbow flexors, would have made a concentric muscle action. Okay, so if you use the muscle that tries to perform that movement and the movement occurs, you have a concentric muscle action. Okay, last one is an eccentric muscle action. This is where you try to produce force, but the movement is in the opposite direction. So think of these as negatives, lowering, um, controlling resistance. So you're still trying, but whatever external resistance you're dealing with is overcoming the amount of force that you're producing. Okay, so no movement, you cause movement, you resist movement are the kind of the keys there. So isometric, maintain position, stay still, concentric, cause movement, eccentric, resist movement. Okay, those are our keys for the first section of our uh, muscle strength and endurance lecture. We'll come back for part two.